Now, tell me if the following scenario sounds familiar. Here you are learning your target language. Here you are finding like-minded people on your campus, on your university campus that you want to speak the language with. And here you are, for example, my target language right now is French. Here I am walking up to the person and I would say something like, Hello, bonjour, ça va? Uh, Est-ce que tu parles français? And instantly this person's going to do something like this, like, oh, no, 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 no. And they'll start speaking English. Now, what really fascinates me about language learning is this idea of like you can study the language for half a decade or even a decade or even some of your family members might speak the language. But yet for some people, after years of studying the language, they still don't know how to speak a word in their target language. This happens around campus a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. I don't understand anything, man. They simply refuse to engage in a proper conversation in a very casual setting because universities and their institutions or their language classes, they've been conditioned to think in the language or to practice the language in a very controlled environment. And that's going to be today's discussion or today's video essay topic. It's going to be the missing link between uh, two camps of people. One camp of people, they can speak the language in whatever context. Another camp of people, they can only speak the language in a very controlled sort of context. And what I've realized is that most people are missing a part missing this critical component of language learning or missing this critical component when they try to speak a new language. And this component is simply the courage or uh, the willingness to follow your curiosity into a language because you are unique. You're a unique learner. You're the kind of learner that you have many idiosyncrasies, you have many weird habits ingrained in you. And your journey of learning a language should be uniquely your own, should be something that cannot be replicated. Like many weird habits of artists, you simply cannot replicate a morning routine of another artist, you know, hoping to achieve the same results. Likewise, my language learning journey is very unique to me and your journey should be very unique to you. And in this video, I just want to share with you guys some of the things that I've done to really get myself to the point where I'm very comfortable with this language, where I'm very comfortable writing in this language, expressing myself in this language, and being able to communicate in this language efficiently. The first step here is that you need to get really, really clear about why. What really fascinates me about a foreign language or a language that I'm trying to learn is simply this idea of the changing of identity how your identity morphs after you've learned a new language. Because I believe language, a foreign language, or any language in general, they're so interconnected with a person's identity, uh, with their culture, with their upbringing, that in a sense, speaking a language is not the same as, you know, reciting things from a book, because anyone can recite things from a book. But to somehow discover the core of the character behind that language, for me, that's something just so fascinating. And of course, with my growing fascination with fashion, I started reading a lot of these, um, uh, a lot of these things by some of my favorite fashion designers, and one of which was Karl Lagerfeld. And Lagerfeld actually confused me quite a bit when I started watching his interviews on YouTube, because in one video he was speaking German, in another video he's speaking fluent French, and in some interview with Americans he was speaking perfect English. And in his book of aphorisms, um, he basically said, I am three people. When I speak English, I'm one person. When I speak German, I'm another. And when I speak French, I'm somebody else again. That's what really fascinates me about a foreign language, about different uh, uh, different groups of people or about different characters from different cultures. What aspect of the language contributed to their character? You know, what aspect of this language contributed to this entire thing of culture? And that's what motivated me to, for example, learn the language. That's what motivated me to adopt some of the, should I say, the attitude behind the language. So the first key idea is that you need to identify what that is for you. You know, what aspect of French culture really fascinates you? What aspects of this identity thing really fascinates you? What is it for you? And that's the first thing that you need to identify for you to actually adopt a sort of curiosity-based learning instead of just this very dry and textbook-based learning. Second key lesson here is that you need to start trusting in, in a sense, your own ability to compile your own list of resources, your own list of curiosities, and your own list of pet projects that you want to work on in your target language. Universities and institutions and language classes, they've in a sense conditioned us to, should I say, be perfect at something. They've in a sense conditioned us to look for a prescribed list of something, a prescribed list of films that we need to watch and grammar books that we need to buy or this novel that we need to read if we want to be better French students. But as human beings, 
we don't really get to control what we're interested in. You know, that book that's prescribed on your university reading list, that could be the most boring book on planet Earth. So this courage to compile your own list of references, your own list of material, that's something that needs to be cultivated. That's not something that you just get to pull out of your ass, especially under this conditioning or the social conditioning of like always looking for the perfect thing because in a sense we're we're in a sense a culture of perfectionists that we don't really get the time to ask ourselves is that a book that I'm actually interested in or is that a film that I'm actually interested in or is it something that I'm simply watching just for the sake of it just for the sake of achieving some perfection and especially if it's in the language that you don't really know especially if it's in a foreign language especially if you don't if you don't know much about this thing just yet it's very hard for us to trust in our own instincts when it comes down to selecting films, selecting books, selecting resources. But over time, what you're gonna realize is that if you wanna learn something new, you have to make it your own. You have to make this process your own. You have to make this process uniquely custom tailored to you. And for me, with my growing interest in fashion, for example, many of the fashion shows, interviews during fashion shows, or many of these articles, um, by prominent well, fashion institutions in France. They were all in French. They were all conducted in French. And for example, Yves Saint Laurent's uh, biopic was actually entirely in French. But because they were aligned with my initial interest in fashion, then those two things sort of connected with each other pretty nicely. So while I'm learning about the French fashion industry, you know, just basically on the side, I'm picking up a lot of little expressions and phrases and pronunciations and accent. So in a sense, selecting your own material for your learning or selecting your own direction with your language learning is a surefire way for you to pick up this language more organically. Whereas if you're obsessed with a list of prescribed readings for French, well, that's just the most boring way I could think of when it comes down to learning a new language. And the third and last lesson is to simply immerse yourself and to basically escape Escape that sense of false security that textbooks are giving you. Because universities and institutions are really good at housing you in this very controlled environment of language learning, which provides you with a false sense of security. But what you have to realize is that if you can't speak this language with a native speaker, you're basically not at all learning the ins and outs of this language. For me, I can safely say that I picked up 80% of all of my French, that I picked up most of my, should I say, conversational French from a little French cafe down the street from me when I used to live in my, live in my little apartment in a city. That linguistic environment is very important, so I went from being really scared to talk to French people. Now, basically those people at the cafe they don't even bother speaking English to me. And I'm aware that not many people have a little French cafe down the street from their apartment. And here is where Lingoda comes in. If you really want to supercharge your environmental learning with, with a language, if you really want to speak a language outside of this safely controlled environment of a classroom, if you really want to speak language, speak your target language like a native, consider the two month sprint challenge offered by Lingoda. This is basically a whole suite of language practices over the course of two months that you can enroll yourself into that's going to sign you up to regular classes and regular course material for all levels of language learning and a really exciting thing here is that if you've managed to complete all of the lessons offered to you in the span of two months you can basically get all your money back from this course I mean mind you in this two months you're basically signing yourself up for 60 language lessons but at the end of the sprint at the end of this super sprint you're basically able to acquire the language environment that you've been craving that your university isn't exactly offering you. And the way Lingoda is going to teach these lessons is through basically face-to-face -face lessons in a small group with native speakers. Out of all the 1,400 teachers on this platform, they're basically all qualified language teachers in your target language at native speaker levels. And if you're a university student, or if you have a busy job on the side, or if you're just generally a busy person, there's always a lesson available to you based on your schedule. So it creates a very flexible learning environment for you. And sometimes through Lingoda, I don't even have to turn my video camera on. I can just take the language lesson in bed when I wake up first thing in the morning. And Lingoda, in a sense, catered the language learning process to all levels, to all of the students from all levels so you don't have to worry about your starting point. If you are from an A1 level, you're gonna be grouped with A1 students. If you're from a more proficient level, for example, B1 or B2, you're gonna be grouped with those groups of people. And of course, material varies from lesson to lesson, so you're not bored out of your mind after a few lessons. 
So in a sense, you can tailor your learning experience alongside your interests by choosing different topics from different levels of your target language. And of course, as a lucky viewer of this channel, if you decide to take the sprint challenge, if you decide to really supercharge your language learning, I have a link and a code for you in the description box down below to get $25 off of your deposit if you embark upon this super sprint or this sprint challenge that Lingoda is offering you guys. Personally, I used Lingoda at the start of my French learning journey to really supercharge my French learning and to supercharge this idea of being at ease with the language. So it is a fantastic platform for you to check out. And I'm super honored to be able to work with a company like this to bring out language learning videos and to bring out uh, future videos on creativity and to combine creativity alongside this idea of being a well-rounded person through learning different languages. And thank you Lingoda for supporting this episode. And at the very tail end of this episode, I just wanna reiterate this point that learning a language doesn't have to be tedious. This idea of tedium or this idea of working really hard to acquire some new grammar rules, this basically came from a place of inauthenticity, it came from a place where you're not really sure how to go about learning the language just yet. I get it, most of us are scared to start a new language, but after this video, I hope I've offered some directions in terms of language learning, in terms of cultivating your own bank of resources when, I'm, when you wanna learn a new language, and to actually thrust yourself into those environments where you can actually engage with the language firsthand. So in summary, number one, identify what fascinates you about the language, Number two, deliberately cultivate your own list of resources away from the prescribed reading list. And number three, offer yourself the right kind of environment to practice this language safely. And in the future, I look forward to sharing more insights about language learning, how to write in a language or how to be more fluent in the language. And I look forward to documenting my French learning journey alongside you guys. R.C. Walden here, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.